Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the uh, series of uh, the lectures where we are at the 7th week. The sequence is 36th lecture. We were solving uh, stress around a hole, how for uniform in plane tension uh, those stresses vary. Uh, on the circumference of a hole. So, we need to we have solved to some extent the problem, we have solved the problem with uh, no hole and with uniform stress condition, axisymmetric stress con condition and uh, this lecture we will solve the remaining portion, the most important portion of the stress distribution. Here we will consider a hole, we will put boundary condition accordingly and with those boundary condition we will see how we can solve the problem. So, with that note we will proceed further, uh, the recapitulation slide comes every le lecture, uh, we simply try want to remember again what we have learned this course. Uh, may be long for somebody, may be not very long, but anyway whatever we have learned and where we are it is better to come get, get a reminder for that. So, history of aircraft and uh, solid mechanics or structural analysis we have done, we have done various types of external loads, uh, conceptual structural details, we have done flight envelope and load factor bending moment and shear force diagram of wing and fuselage, truss and uh, space structures we have done, solved uh, problems related to landing gear. We have uh, used different energy methods to find deflection, mm, it is for determinate as well, as well as indeterminate structures, external, internal both we have done. We have used uh, different methods like dummy load, load method, unit load method, uh, Castiglianos theorem. We have also learned a very, very important method like Rayleigh Ridge method. We have come across the theory of elasticity next, and then uh, there we have learned different equations uh, required to solve problems, and in that process, we have uh, solved problems in inverse and semi-inverse method. We have solved problems for a cantilever beam loaded at tip, that is a very good solution we get. And then uh, we have uh, we have discussed uh, a part of, uh, of the problem, where there is a hole in a plate and the plate is loaded uh, on its plane. And because of the hole, how the stress varies on the circumference of the hole, we need to study and we will go into that problem. So, we have uh, solved a part of it in, in last 2-3 lectures and we will continue with that without any introduction. So, what we have considered here is that we are there is a hole uh, of diameter twice a, uniform tension is acting of amplitude s. We are considering one more circle uh, b, which is considerably large in, red, in radius in comparison to the whole radius. And we are assuming that the stress, stress distribution beyond this hole or uh, beyond this circle is uh, uniform. Uh, uniform in the sense as if there is no hole in the 
structure or the plate. So, considering that we got that there are two part one is sigma r and the other is tau r theta. Sigma r is also divided in two part one is because of the uniform compression or tension s by 2 other is theta dependent component tau r theta is completely theta dependent component. So, the first part uh, considering the first part that is uh, axis symmetric case s by 2 that we have solved to some extent and we have discussed that if there is no hole uh, in this particular case a b goes to 0 and it results in to the sigma r or sigma sigma r or sigma theta as constant. But uh, we are discussing uh, the problem with hole that is the reason after repeating the equations what we have derived in the last class we are considering the case with a hole. If there is a hole at the origin other solutions then uniform tension and compression can be derived from the expressions from these expressions only. Taking B as 0 this comes uh, may appear bit arbitrary, but we do not have the scope to prove this. Let us consider that B becomes 0 considering the displacement considerations. The above equations becomes sigma r equals to a by r square plus twice c and sigma theta is equals to minus a by r square plus twice c. So, if this is the case and if we imagine uh, that it is under pressure from inside as well as from outside it, it may look like a cylinder. This solution may be adapted to represent the stress distribution in a hollow cylinder submitted to uniform pressure on the inner and outer surface. Let A and B denote the inner and outer radii of the cylinder and P i and P o the uniform internal and external pressure. So, what it, it says that this is P o and this stress distribution whatever we see that is P i okay. and we are considering some problem where we have a cylinder something like this and it is under pressure from outside as well as from inside. Inside also there are pressures as it is shown here. So, this is x y z it is not the same way it is given here it is upside down may be considered for Cartesian uh, right hand rule system it has to be x y z in this way otherwise we need to draw it in a different way. Anyway, so here x y is in acting in a different direction. So, as it is says that uh, both are compression that is the reason it is minus this is also minus acting there. So, we need to put the boundary condition we need to check what are the constants we get. Substituting the first of stress expression we obtain the following equation to determine a and c. So, in sigma r if we substitute we have this is equals to p i and this is also a this is say mistake this should be b. So, a by b square is equals to plus 2 i c. So, with that if we go for solving this a and c we negate the equation this as well as 2 c is equals to this and from there what we can if we directly substitute this to the values we have 1 by r square remains and 2 c is this value. So, there is nothing more to discuss and similar way sigma theta 
is having this expression. So, we now know for a case where it is in compressive stress from inside as well as from outside a cylinder how the stress distribution is. It is dependent on again only on r not on theta because it is axisymmetric case again. Okay. So, the remaining part consisting of now we come to the remaining part remaining part that is the reason I have brought back those two equations why we are saying remaining part because uh, sigma r and tau r theta what we have seen is that uh, is the expression beyond the b or while there is no hole. So, this part we have considered so far with a hole the remaining part means that this s cos 2 theta by 2 and tau equals to minus s sin 2 theta by 2 those two parts we need to consider and find out the stresses. The remaining part consisting of normal stresses half s cos t 2 theta together with the shearing stress minus half s sin 2 theta produce stresses from which may be derived from stress function of the form phi is equals to f r cos 2 theta. So, substituting in the compatibility equations what we can see is that it is substituted here we have f f is a function of 4 f this is completely I think you can get there is there any need to explain I do not find any need to explain it is some simply substituted here and accordingly we get this del 2 phi del 2 r square is simply theta theta is coming out in all the cases cos 2, 2 theta comes out that is the reason only f component is present there. So, uh, del 2 del 2 f del r 2 then 1 by r del f del r minus 4 f r square and this is the other parameter. So, because it is grad 4 form. So, phi is equals to the general stress function is therefore, may be as this phi is equals to a r square plus b r to the power 4 plus c 1 by r square plus d. Again how do we get to this it is simply a mathematical uh, portion we are not going to discuss it. So, with this we, we proceed to the next part. So, what we need to do is that uh, and the corresponding stress components sigma r since we have uh, got that uh, stress functions with constants a b c d if we use the stress function uh, expressions uh, with to find out the normal sigma r and sigma theta and tau r theta we get these components as minus of 2 i j to 6 c by r 4 to the power 4 4 d by r square cos 2 theta sigma theta is in this function this these are the f r portions and then we have uh, this form also and uh, what do we have after that we need to substitute the boundary conditions. So, if we go into substitution of the boundary conditions the constants of integrations are now to be determined from boundary conditions for the outer boundary and from the conditions that the edge of the hole is free from external forces. Uh, this condition gives that the considering this this part only what we have is this minus has come in the, the other side and for the outer boundary at this is at b and it is 0 sigma r is 0 in the inner boundary and we put that is equals to 0 considering these equations we have these two boundary conditions and if we go for the other equations with 
tau r theta uh, if we put that again we have two equations. So, total we have four equations and if we solve those four equations uh, this is the bound other boundary condition just shown, shown here so, solving these equations and putting a by b equals to 0 that is assuming infinitely large split we obtain that a is equals to minus s by 4 b is equals to 0 c is equals to minus s a to the power 4 by 4 and d is equals to s a square by 2. Substituting these values of constant into the stress equations and adding the stress process produced by the uniform tension half s on the outer boundary calculated from the expressions of the stress for the problem of stress distribution symmetrical about an axis we find this is for stress distribution symmetrical about an axis and here we are supposed to their p and p forces were compressive here it is in tens type is tensile so keeping in mind that the sign change we need to consider we also need to consider that a by b is equals to 0 so if we take common from this side the b, b gets cancelled and accordingly we get we remain the a, the r square remains this portion becomes 0, no not this portion becomes uh, 0, this, this is also p, p inner is equals to 0, p i is 0, here also p i is equals to 0 and p outer is supposed to be minus of s by 2 putting those values what do we get that sigma r is equals to s by 2 1 in 1 minus s square by r square plus s by 2 1 plus 3 s square plus r square minus 4 s square by r square cos 2 theta. So, this is because of the axis symmetric part what we have solved earlier and this part is from this up to this process whatever we have solved. So, this becomes a linear combination of both the cases and then we have an expressions for sigma r. Similarly, if we put the values and we know the constants for sigma theta if we consider we have the value for sigma theta and also the value for tau r theta. So, finally, we have all the expressions for sigma theta tau r theta and sigma r uh, sorry sigma r sigma theta and tau r theta around this hole and what uh, does this what does this drawing what is shown here represents that we will try to explain now and see how it is do we get that portion. So, if we look into this if r is very large sigma r and tau r theta approaches the value given in the previous derivation or in the boundary condition. At the edge of the hole r equals to a we find that sigma r and tau r theta is equals to 0. If we substitute the value r equals to a in the sigma r expression which is uh, not brought here we can easily see that. So, that becomes that sigma r and tau r theta equals to is 0, but sigma theta is not 0 sigma theta uh, makes an expression something like this s minus 2 i s cos 2 theta and that is a very very significant equations and this gives us a distribution something like this. So, it can be seen that sigma theta is greatest when theta is equals to pi by 2 or theta is equals to 3 pi by 2. So, where it is this is at this point and this is or the other way we are measuring theta in this this way. So, if I say this is theta 1 this is position 
1, if, if we say this is theta 2, this is position 2. So, with this we see that these are the two points where sigma theta is maximum. Which way sigma theta is acting? In this particular case, if we consider this portion, consider some element here, sigma r is acting in these directions, sigma theta is acting, sigma r this is and sigma theta is acting in this direction. So, if this is acting in this direction, what is the value in this particular point? At the end m, uh, m and n of the diameter perpendicular to the direction of the tension, uh, this is maybe this is not for may be darkened. Please note that this portion to be, but how to do? Excuse me. Sir, sir, এটা বইয়ের রেফারেন্স ফিগার এই ফিগারটা এখানে থাকাটা উচিত না আপনি একটুখানি এডিটের সময় যদি সম্ভব হয় একটু ঠেকে দাও একটু নোট রেখে দিন তাহলে আমরা আবার কন্টিনিউ করি আপনি বললে সো দিস আর এট দিস পয়েন্ট অ্যাজ উই हैव सीन द स्ट्रेसेस सिग्मा आर एंड सिग्मा थीटा इज एक्टिंग दिस वे uh, this is sigma theta and that value what we get is that this is become minus become becomes plus in this particular value and we we have uh, this is equals to 3 s that means whatever the stress applied to the plate this particular portion the element whatever we see this element is experiencing sigma theta is equals to 3 s 3 times the s. So, and it is in, in tensile nature it is in opening nature if you look at it if we consider this portion it is opening in nature. So, this is the maximum tensile stress and is in is 3 times the uniform stress S applied at the ends of the plate. At the point P and Q theta is equals to pi and 0, this if we look at uh, instead uh, we have minus S. So, if we consider some element here, if we consider say here some element. In this particular case, this is sigma theta and this is sigma r and this sigma theta is equals to minus s. So, this part is m n is in compression tension m and in in tension tensile stress and p and q in compressive stress so this is very very important point to note you please also note and now uh, if we if we apply the values in sigma theta and if we increase the other values, increase the value of r uh, say not equals to a say little bit more than a if we continue putting we, we along this direction along this line 
we have the sigma theta distribution following this parameter this profile. So, this is a very good point to note though it is of 3s it reduces very quickly as we have learned uh, following the St. Venance principle. There is a and that distribution is something like this. So, if it is under tension with S stress at these two points it is experiencing tensile stress of magnitude 3 S and at this two point it is experiencing compressive stress of magnitude S. So, with this note uh, with some considerations or a few discussions we will come to the next lecture we will see how things are improved for service and accordingly we will go to the next problem to solve torsion related things. So, with that note uh, we come to the end of the lecture today reference is a standard reference. So, what we have learned that the distribution of stress, stress distribution uh, on the circumference of circular hole and in this process very very important phenomena with insight how the stress varies we have learned and with that note uh, we come to the end of today's lecture. So, Thank you for attending this lecture, we will meet again with some more lectures. Thank you.